Hey everyone, we continue with our polynomials unit and uh, we're working on lesson 8 now in your workbook. However, you may have noticed that we kind of skipped lesson 6 and 7. Um, one of those is looking at rational zero theorem, although good to know uh, it's not specified as required in the curriculum, so we're going to skip that for the sake of time. And the other one I think we can kind of, you know, combine and learn in this one as well, in my opinion, so that we can save a little time as well. Okay, so we are looking at investigating the graphs of polynomial functions. And we're, first of all, we're going to talk about something called repeated factors. So we have the graph of a polynomial function, p of x equals x plus 1 in brackets, x minus 3 in brackets squared, and it's shown here. Okay, the polynomial has two factors, you'll notice, two factors. Okay, x plus 1 and x minus 3 squared, one of which is repeated. Okay, so this one here, this x minus 3 squared, we could write that as x minus 3 times x minus 3, right? When you square something, that means essentially you're multiplying it by itself. Okay, so you could look at the polynomial function in that way. So the x minus 3 factor is repeated. So what this means is that the function has two distinct, okay, so different from each other, zeros, one of which is a repeated zero. So if we were to set each of these factors equal to zero, you would get x plus 1 equals 0, x would equal negative 1, that's one of our zeros, okay, and then x minus 3 equals 0, which means x would equal 3. And if we did it again for the other factor, we'd also get x equals 3. See how that zero is repeated, okay? So we have two distinct zeros, negative 1 and 3, one of which, 3, which is a repeated 0. All right, so the zeros of the function, okay, we talked about that already. The graph of the function has two distinct, or two different x-intercepts. So if you look here, one of our x-intercepts is x equals negative 1. There it is there too. And this x-intercept is x equals 3. Okay, how does this repeated um, 0 or factor show up as an x-intercept. Look at how the graph touches the x-axis at those two different x-intercepts. Okay, um, this one here, it the graph comes down and basically bounces off, um, or is tangent to, and then goes back up. To, and in that situation, that's when we have two real but equal zeros, okay? So the x-intercept at negative 1 represented a real zero of the function, okay, real number kind of thing, and the x-intercept of 3 represented two real equal zeros. So even though it, it's only one x-intercept, it actually is two zeros. They're just equal, okay? Um, so in this repeated zero, Okay, so the repeated 0 of 3 is said to be a 0 of multiplicity 2, okay? So when you have that 0 being repeated, in this case, it'd be a multiplicity of 2. Notice the ex original exponent on that factor, also a 2. Hmm. And then we have a 0 of negative 1, okay, right here, and we discovered it up here, and it has a multiplicity of just 1, okay? also related to the exponent on the original factor. Okay, so this brings up this new word called multiplicity. Okay, what that is, is the multiplicity of a zero corresponds to the number of times a factor is repeated in the function. Okay, hence related to the exponent on that factor if it's all in nicely factored form. Okay, so we're gonna, in this lesson, look at how the multiplicity of the zero affects the shape of the graph. And in order to do, do this, we first have to define some terms. So when I say tangent or point of inflection, you know what we're talking about. Okay, so a tangent, a polynomial graph, is tangent to the x-axis at a point where the graph touches the x-axis and does not cross through it. So see how this graph comes down, touches the x-axis, and then goes back up here goes up, touches, and comes back down. That's when you have a tangency, okay? Point of inflection, so a, point, a polynomial graph has a point of inflection on the x-axis if the graph changes concavity at a point on the x-axis. Now, maybe concavity is new to you as well. If something's concave up, it has kind of a happy face look to it. 
okay? If it's concave down, it has a bit of a sad face look, okay? So this is concave down right up until this point here, and then it starts changing into a concave up graph, okay? That point right there where it changed, that's a point of inflection, okay? Here we have concave up, a little bit of a happy face, and then concave down, here's where it changed, that's our point of inflection. Okay, and in this lesson we're only, go only going to look at polynomials where the leading coefficient is either 1 or negative 1. Okie doke, so let's take a look at the next page. Okay, so example number 1, consider the polynomial function. Yikes, okay, p of x equals x to the 6, so this, the degree of this polynomial appears to be 6, that's a big one, eh? Ah, but they've given it to us also in factored form, x plus 3 in brackets, x plus 1 squared, x minus 2 cubed, okay? Sketch the graph of p of x using the window. Now, after this lesson, you're going to know how to sketch that using those factors, but for now, they're showing you the windows, so they're implying that you want to use your calculator. Just to review, that first number is your x min, the second number is your x max, and then this is your x scale, how often the tick marks happen on the axes. Okay, so first one here, y min, y max, and then y scale. Okay, so grab your graph and calculator. Let's put the equation in. We could put either equation in. So whichever one you would like to do is fine. If you want to do this one, it's shorter. We could do that one, assuming the factoring's done properly, which I'm sure it is. Okay, so let's put that in the calculator. Okay, so once you've got the equation entered in y1, we then want to set our window settings to what they've indicated here. And uh, you'll notice the Y ones are pretty unique. So we'll go to Window, and we'll type in what we need there. Uh, let's see, hang on a second, that one did not work. I have a minus sign instead of a negative sign there. So we need to change that. Use the negative sign, negative 5. Okay, then we have all the way to 5. Okay, X scale is fine for Y. It appears we need to have negative 100. Okay, so you, how about you guys finish entering those and then we'll take a look at the graph, okay? Okay, so we should have gotten a graph that looks kind of like this. And now they want us to complete the chart below to state the zeros of P of X, their multiplicities, okay? And whether each zero passes straight through the axes, is tangent to the X axis, or has a point of inflection. Okay, so we're going to have to probably flip back and forth between this, but let's look at our zeros first of all. Okay, so looking at this graph, looks like we have a zero at negative 1, negative 3, okay, and probably positive 2. Okay, now we're going to assume that they've got nice integer zeros on this one, okay, and actually we won't have to assume once we look at this equation. Okay, so let's write that down. We've got zeros of negative 3, negative 1, and positive 2. Okay, now let's go to their multiplicities. So their multiplicities are related to the exponents on the original factors. So that exponent of x, or that 0 of negative 3, the corresponding factor, x plus 3, has an exponent of 1. So therefore the multiplicity is 1. The 0 of negative 1, or x-intercept of negative 1, corresponds to the factor x plus 1 squared. The 2 indicates the multiplicity, the squared, so that one is multiplicity of 2. Finally, a 0 of 2, x minus 2 is a factor, the exponent is 3, that's your multiplicity. Now, looking at the graph, we're going to look at how the graph behaved, and that's how our description goes. Did it pass straight through the x-axis at those zeros? It, was it tangent to, like bounces off, or did it have a point of inflection? So if we kind of copy what our graph looked like, okay, and I think if I go from memory here, it looked something like this. Hopefully your graph looks, oh, we get that one a little more tangent here. Or sorry, more like a point of inflection. Really bad graph. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> like this, bounce, flatten out, and then across. These are not easy to draw. Okay, so that looks pretty good. This was negative 3, that was at negative 1, and this was at 2. 
Okay, I'm just going to confirm that with a graph. Okay, so just comparing to our hand-drawn graph. Okay, it doesn't look quite as pretty, and I didn't go quite as far down right here. That could have gone further down, but the general idea is right. Okay, so as a description, at x equals negative 3, we pass straight through. Okay, passed straight through. All right, at negative 1, this one, it appears that we bounced off, or in math language, was tangent to. Okay, and at x equals 2, we do what I call snake through the x-axis at x equals 2, and that would be a point of inflection. And there we go. Okay, so complete the following. The degree of p of x is, okay, to get the degree, you look when it's in expanded form, we look at the highest exponent on x. That would be a 6. But in factored form, if it's completely factored, what you do is you take the exponents on each factor and you add them up, 1 plus 2 plus 3, and that gives you also your degree of 6. Okay, so that's a good way to figure out the degree if it's in factored form. The sum of the multiplicities of the zeros of p of x is, okay, let's add up all those multiplicities, 1 plus 2 plus 3, guess what? That also equals 6. So the sum of the multiplicities and the degree, they should equal each other. All right, last example for this lesson. Example number two, a polynomial function has the equation x to the 4, yada, yada. So we've got a quartic poly polynomial function here. Sketch the graph. Okay, so we're going to grab the graphing calculator, put this into y1, set your windows, and then what I'd like you to do is copy the graph onto this graph here in your workbook. And then we'll analyze the chart below. So pause your video, and if you want to fill in the chart below as well, but I'll, um, we'll continue and then I'll fill that in. So graph, graph it here, and then look at the chart. Okay, pause your video. Okay, so we should have got a graph that looks like this. And now if we fill in, we're assuming that the um, x-intercepts here are integers on this example. It's not always the case. It's possible that we would have x-intercepts that would have to be determined using um, quadratic formula. Um, but for this example, they are integers, and we'll assume that. So our zeros would be negative 4. That's our first x-intercept. Negative 1 and 4. So the zeros of the function are that. Now, to get the multiplicity, let's look at how the graph behaves. So when it passes straight through, the multiplicity is 1. So that is occurring at both negative 4 and 4, isn't it? So let's fill those in as multiplicities of 1. At negative 1, we have uh, the graph is tangent to the x-axis at negative 1. So that bounds means we have a multiplicity of 2. So description, passes straight through, okay, tangent to, or bounces, okay, and then gets straight through again. All right, so complete the following. The degree of p of x is, well, the degree is your highest exponent on x when you're in expanded form, so degree 4. The sum of the multiplicities, 1 plus 2 plus 1 is going to be 4. Good. Write the polynomial in the form p of x equals x minus a, x minus b, x minus c squared. Okay, so what they want you to do here is turn your zeros back into factors. So an x-intercept of negative 4 turned back into a factor, add 4 to the other side, would be x plus 4. Okay, so we would have a factor of x plus 4. Okay, we'd have a factor of, well that's our degree 2 1, so, or our um, multiplicity of 2, so we'll leave that one for a minute. Okay, so um, that one would be a factor of x minus 4. Okay, and I'm putting it in this order because they did, and they had the one that had the multiplicity of 2 at the end, which would be this one, which would turn into a factor of x plus 1 if you move that over. So x plus 1 with a multiplicity of 2, so there's our exponent. And there you go. That's how you take basically the zeros or x-intercepts from the graph, acknowledge what their multiplicities are, and then turn it back into factored form like what we have here. 
Okay, and there's our polynomial factored. Now we do know how to factor that algebraically as well, which is where we're going to go in, in future lessons. So great job you guys, one part to lesson eight.